Carrying on from our last video, it's going to be very similar, except now instead of using the automatic low loss fittings, we're going to use the manual valve style low loss fittings. These give us a little bit more control, but we still have the same goal. Take the refrigerant out of the tank without fractionation, get it through our hoses without contamination, and get it into the refrigeration system without damaging our compressors. So we have those same three steps we have to go through. So first I'm going to start off with my refrigerant tank. We're going to take it off the scale. I'm going to zero the scale out, put my tank on the scale, and write down on the tank how much that refrigerant weighs. I have to compare this with my ending refrigerant from the last step to make sure I didn't lose any refrigerant from my tank. Now I have a good starting point. I'm going to then hook my gauges up to the system. I like to start by hooking the suction hose up first and again with the two fingers. Two fingers on this connection, never behind it, never in front of it, or use butylene gloves, but never the cotton style gloves because they'll absorb the liquid refrigerant. So we connect this on here. Once I have it connected, I'll open up this manual valve. That allows refrigerant, low pressure vapor to flow through this blue hose. And by doing that, I can simply loosen the connection right here and that will purge the vapor refrigerant out of this hose. Just like we did before, it just takes a second to purge that vapor out. And remember, we want to get that air, the dirty, nasty, polluted air, the contaminants, the moisture out of that hose and make sure it's pure, clean refrigerant. Then we have our middle hose, our yellow hose, or our service hose, or charging hose, some people call it. They all have different names, they still mean the same thing. Notice that we also have a valve on this hose as well. So what I'm going to do with this valve is I'm going to go ahead and open it, and I'm going to attach it to my refrigerant tank, but I'm going to leave it loose. Notice there's a little different step how we did with the automatic low loss fittings. So I'm just going to leave it loose on the tank. And now what I'm going to do is open up my low pressure side on my manifold gauge set. By opening this up, refrigerant is going to flow through the blue hose, through my manifold gauge set, through the yellow hose, and it's going to be leaking or purging out of this connection. So now I'm using the refrigerant, the low pressure vapor refrigerant in the system to push the contaminants out of that yellow hose. Maybe it's dirty, nasty, polluted air. Maybe there's moisture. Maybe there's refrigerant from the last service call. But now as I purge it out of this connection, I can then quickly tighten this connection up. And now, even with this hose open, I have no refrigerant leaking out. After I do that, I can turn this tank upside down. And by having this tank upside down, I now have the liquid refrigerant at the exit port. So now we know that we're getting pure, clean liquid refrigerant in the correct quantities because there's liquid refrigerant coming out in the proper quantities that the manufacturer designed. Now that I've got that done, I can zero out my scale or hit the tear button on the scale and that weighs everything on the scale as being zero. So now as I take refrigerant out of the scale, I'm seeing the difference in that weight and my scale keeps track of that. But we still have one more hose to hook up. Notice I'm going to leave my suction, I'll leave it open. And what I'm then going to do is take my high pressure hose and I'm just barely, 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 barely going to thread it on right here. Not enough for it to actually make connection, just barely thread it to where it's going to be loose. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my high side connection on my manifold gauge set. Now I've connected the blue side, the yellow side, and the red side all together. That low pressure vapor is now going to push across this manifold gauge set. We couldn't do that before with the automatic low loss fittings, but now with the manual fittings, I can fully purge and clean across my manifold gauge set. I'm purging through this hose. Once I open this valve right here, that low pressure vapor only refrigerant is going to be leaking out of this connection. Notice it's only low pressure vapor coming out. So that's a lot safer to work with than it would be if it was the high pressure liquid like we had before. And notice I'm purging it this direction. So this gives me a lot more control. Once that refrigerant starts purging through there, I'm going to close this little valve off and go ahead and tighten that high side up all the way on this system. Now I've purged out, I've cleaned out that red hose. It's all purged up and I'm connected here. That buys me time. I can now go ahead and close both my manifold gauge sets. A little bit more steps involved, but it's a whole lot safer to work with overall. Now both of these are closed. I'm going to go ahead and open my high pressure side. By opening my high pressure side, high pressure liquid refrigerant is going to come up into my manifold gauge set. Because I have my valve closed, it can't go anywhere else. It's only going to my manifold gauge set. My blue side valve is open, so my low pressure refrigerant is flowing to my low side. My low side valve is closed, so it can only go here at this point. I already have low pressure vapor trapped inside this yellow hose to begin with, and I already have my low loss fitting opened at my tank. The next thing I'm going to do with my tank is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open this valve on the tank all the way up, and now we're ready to go. Just to cover all the valves again, the valve on the tank itself is fully open, and the valve on the hose is now fully open. 
I also have the I also have the low side on my suction port completely closed off. This valve is closed, but the low side valve on my hose is open. I'm reading low pressure vapor. On my high side, this valve is open on my hose at the unit, but my high side of my manifold is closed off. So we're closed, closed, open, 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 and open. So now we're ready to add refrigerant. So while the system is running, this is an example of the system running only. You can only do this while it's running. So the system is running, we can add refrigerant in. So I'm gonna get refrigerant out of the tank into the system and we know that we cannot charge it through the high side because the high pressure of the unit is higher than the pressure in the tank. In this example, 318 on the high side, 236 in my tank. So the refrigerant would only leave the unit and go into my tank. Luckily again, we have that check valve so we don't have to worry about that happening. So I literally cannot charge refrigerant from the high side on a running system. So we can only charge it in the low side, but we do not want to get liquid refrigerant into our vapor pumps. We're going to give it short little shots of refrigerant. I'm just going to quickly open and close this blue valve on the manifold gauge set. So this valve is going to open and close. That's going to give it a little shot of liquid refrigerant. So liquid refrigerant is already out of the tank in this hose up to this point. And when I open and close this valve very quickly, that liquid refrigerant flows through that valve. A certain amount of liquid refrigerant, metered amount of liquid refrigerant flows into this blue hose. But now that liquid refrigerant is going to be at a much lower pressure. So it's going to start boiling immediately, changing state from liquid to vapor. It's also going to expand. And as it's expanding, it's even boiling more. And it's going to expand and start filling up this hose. Now we're not metered as much because before we had our automatic low loss fittings, which slowed the flow down. With these manual valves, it flows much faster. But I'm still being metered by my Schrader port in here. So it's still being slowed down, but that little bit of liquid refrigerant expands to the whole length of this blue hose. Then it gets into this even larger pipe, going from a quarter inch hose to say a three quarter inch pipe. Now we can expand even more. And ideally, all that refrigerant turns into a vapor before it gets to the compressor. If you don't know how long you should wait, feel on your suction side, feel either on the other side of the port or right here at this connection. When the temperature is pretty well equalized, it's a good chance that that refrigerant has now fully turned into a vapor before it's gotten into the compressor and you can give it another little shot. When in doubt, wait a little bit longer. And again, just like before, the farther away from your target superheat and the farther away from your target subcooling, the quicker you can add those shots of refrigerant in. As you get closer and closer to your target, give it smaller and smaller shots because now you'll see that you can very easily overshoot or overcharge the system. So eventually we're just gonna keep doing that same process, add a little bit of refrigerant, check our super heat, check our subcooling. And as we get closer and closer to it to match, then we know that we're almost there. Now, before I get fully charged, I'm really close to being there. I'm not fully charged yet, but I'm getting really, really close. I'm gonna wait a lot longer between each individual shots I get. But when I think that I'm almost there, I'm gonna go ahead and take this valve on my hose at my tank and I'm gonna close this valve off. Now you can close the valve on the tank itself, but it's a lot easier just to close the valve on the hose. It does the same thing. It's gonna stop the refrigerant from coming out of my tank. I'm gonna look on my scale and see how much refrigerant total that I've put into that system. Now it gives me an idea how much refrigerant I've put in and I wanna write that number down. But we still have this little bit of liquid refrigerant in this service hose. So I'm just gonna throttle in a couple of times this liquid refrigerant. It doesn't take but two or three times and you'll take all the liquid refrigerant out of this hose into the system. All that's gonna be left is low pressure vapor. Once you have an only low pressure vapor, you can leave this service port all the way open and it's fully connecting this yellow hose to the blue hose. And eventually your pressure is gonna equalize. You have the same pressure here as you do in this hose. And it's all low pressure vapor. Now you check our super heat and subcooling, we're good, we're matched. We can take our gauges off of the system. Now remember I've already have my manifold gauge set opened right here, the blue side only to the middle hose. This side only is open. My valve is already off at the tank. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close the high side valve at the hose on the unit. So this high side valve, I'm gonna manually close this valve off. Now I have liquid refrigerant in this high side hose. So what I'm gonna then do is throttle in that last little bit of liquid refrigerant that was in this hose. And by opening and closing my high side of my manifold gauge set, that liquid refrigerant will go across my manifold gauge set. The higher pressure is gonna go to the lower pressure side. And it's going to bleed the high pressure out of this hose into my suction side. By then I'm taking all the refrigerant out of this hose and putting it back into the system by bleeding it across the manifold gauge set. 
Now we can do this because we've already purged all these points. We know that there is zero contamination of that system. So now that I got the same pressure on the high side and the low side, I know that all of my refrigerant has gone back into the system. So now we can start the process of taking our gauges off. So I'm gonna close off my suction valve here and I'll take that one off first because it's the easiest to work with. Two fingers, quickly that one comes off. Then I'm gonna take my high side off. Two fingers very quickly, all the way off or all the way on, take that one completely off. Now there's only vapor in this hose and there's only vapor in this hose, but I still have this one left. We're gonna take this tank, we're gonna turn it right side up. I'm gonna now close off the tank because it's easy to get to. And if you notice here, I already have my valve shut off that hasn't changed and I unscrew this hose, there's just gonna be a little de minimis amount just right here between this valve and this valve. And now all three hoses are removed, removed from the tank, removed from the system. But I have the minimus vapor refrigerant here at 130 PSI vapor only, 130 PSI vapor only, and 130 PSI vapor only. But remember I've left my suction valve open and I've left my high side valve open. I can simply take this valve and I can open this valve up and all three of these will bleed together out of this service hose. And I'll bleed that de minimis amount out of this hose, this hose, and this hose. And remember it's only vapor, so de minimis amount of refrigerant, which is allowed by the EPA. We vent that de minimis amount of refrigerant out. Once it gets down to zero, I quickly close this off because I don't want any moisture to get in here. I go ahead and put my hoses on the back of the manifold to make sure that I don't get any oil or any contaminants up inside of those hoses. I go ahead and take my valve caps, whether it be locking caps, brass caps, or the hex style caps, but not plastics or notorious for leaking. I go ahead and put those caps back onto the system to make sure the system's protected. I just take my tank off of my scale, re-zero the scale, put my tank back on the scale, and write down my ending weight. By doing this, I'll have my starting weight and my end weight so I can still see exactly how much refrigerant I put in. That's important because now I can know if my scale lost connectivity between my remote and the scale that I'll still have a manual backup to go with and also if my batteries died halfway between it. So now I've put that notes in there and I really have a running logbook on my refrigerant tank itself, which is really nice and convenient. And I can now have an ending point that I can compare with my next starting point to see if my tank's leaking. And then later I can take this information, put it in my logbook if I need. But I can take this, put it back in the truck, make sure my hoses are properly back of my manifold gate set, the caps are properly here, and also it's important to make sure you got a good quality cap on your tank to make sure your tank doesn't leak. These valves are notorious for leaking. We can put our scale up and we're ready to go to the next call. Now it sounds like a lot of steps and it can be very overwhelming. I have manual control over the low loss fittings. I can purge the opposite direction with this valve. So I can now purge at my tank. Now I can purge with vapor only instead of having to worry about purging with liquid refrigerant. It allows me to be able to actually purge through my manifold gauge set. And there's really a hundred different ways you can use these manual low loss valves, but they give you more control. Also, they allow the flow of refrigerant to flow faster because they're less restrictive as those automatic low loss fittings. But sometimes with new students, they get overwhelmed at these low loss valves but you need to know how to work with them so that if your lead that you're working with has these manual valves, you already know what to do. And there's multiple different scenarios of how people like to do it. However your lead wants hoses installed is how you should do it. But eventually you'll be in your own truck by yourself and it still comes down to the basic things. Take the refrigerant out of the tank without fractionation. Make sure your hoses are purged so there's no contamination and make sure you throttle it into the suction side on a running system so we don't damage the compressor. And remember all of these scenarios are for a running and operating system. You never wanna do these steps with a system that's off because now you're gonna be dumping liquid refrigerant into the suction side. It won't have time to evaporate and when the compressor restarts, that liquid refrigerant is gonna go right into the compressor and kill it. In the next video, let's change out this three port manifold gauge set to a four port manifold gauge set.